Welcome to Every Nation Dorado Church, where we see a transformed society that advances the kingdom of God through discipleship in the word, presence, and power of God. Let's take a look at some of the announcements for the upcoming weeks. Just a reminder that we will be having water baptism today from 1 to 2 p.m. The address is RF1088 Dimu Hamambo Street, Academia Extension 1. Please remember to bring clothes that can get wet and a towel. For any more information, you can speak to our leaders after the church services. And we have some very exciting news. Every first Monday of the month will be a men's only prayer meeting. So women, we encourage you to send your husbands, your brothers, your cousins, your friends that are men to attend these prayer meetings. It'll take place from the same time from 5.30 to 7 p.m. So men, we call you to arise and we encourage you to attend these prayer meetings. On the 27th of February from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., there will be a youth parent brunch. We welcome all parents to meet the youth leadership team. Please do RSVP by the 25th of February for catering purposes. For more information, you can contact Julio Gustavo at 081-297-8090. Friday the 26th of February from 6 to 8 p.m. We welcome back all our youth. So if you are between the ages of 13 and 18, please do join us at church. For more information, you can contact Julio at 081-297-8090. Friday the 5th of March will be our Night of Encounters prayer night at 6 p.m. This will be taking place right here at the church venue, so make sure that you diarize this date. On Saturday the 6th of March, we will be having a hospital outreach at the Central Hospital. From 14.45 to 4 p.m., all are invited to join and pray at the parking area of the Central Hospital. For more information, you can contact on Catherine at 81 We believe in equipping the believers to minister. So from the 12th to the 13th of March, we will be having our Hearing God's Voice training. Hearing God's voice is a course for anyone who wants to hear God's voice more clearly and wants to be used in the gift of prophecy. The fee will be $200 per person, which includes a book and a light lunch. Please do register at the info table at church or you can visit our website on our events page to register for hearing God's voice. On the 14th of March, we will be having a child dedication Sunday. Please note that attending the pre-dedication class on the 13th of March at 2 p.m. is a prerequisite to dedicating your child at church. Please sign up your child by registering on our website on our event page. Visit our website for any additional information at www.envento.org. Good morning, everyone. So happy to be with you once again um, on our online service and wherever you may find yourself. Um, glad that you're tuning in with us and listening. Um, just before we start, I just want to highlight two announcements. One is the baptism that's taking to, uh, place today at one o'clock. You can go back to the slide just for more details um, and just check there for what is coming up today and where will it take place and what would you need and then secondly, we have something exciting um, that is starting, as you uh, might have noted on the announcements, and that's the men's prayer starting on the first Monday in March. And I want to invite all you men to join us on that Monday. And um, if you have a guy at home and you see him on Monday at 5.30, still at home, please send him to church. Send him to Every Nation Dorado so that he can come and join with other men and pray. We're going to have an exciting time together as men when we're also expecting for what God is going to do in our midst and in the men's lives of in this year. And so... Um, we're starting a, a new series this um, Sunday um, on relationships. And 
This is kind of a peculiar uh, title that I or message that I want to bring, in, 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 especially in light of the the scripture passage that I chose. Um, but I want you to bear with me and, and try to follow with me as I do believe it's important, especially as we frame February to be this month of relationships and, uh, and love and all of that, that we ensure that certain relationships are in good health and in good place. And so I titled this message this morning, We Should All Be Single. We Should All Be Single. And just before we head into this message, here's the, the question I want to ask us. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the demands of life. You've ever felt overwhelmed by the demands of life, that there are just so many things that require attention and some require attention, some we give attention, but it, 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 you might come to this place where you feel like you're torn in different directions just to uh, because of the things of life, it might be work on one side, it might be a relationship on another, it might be an event, it might be uh, whatever, it might be a wedding or whatever it might be. There's so many things happening through a week or through a, a month and through a day that you might feel torn into different directions. And in another sense, a bit figuratively, it's almost like all of these things are relationships. All of them involve people or somehow we need to manage our attention um, distribution, where we give it to. And we oftentimes put much effort into these demands of life. It's, it's quite amazing how we have time and we make time for many things in in a month and in a week and in a day and and sometimes even though we feel we we might not get to everything um we we still give a lot of effort to maintaining a good relationship um whether it's being at work whether it's in our uh, households or with friends or with an event or a baby shower or a marriage or a church event or a social event or whatever you might be busy with. We give a lot of attention to maintain these demands and requirements that are on our life. And all of these demands can make us anxious or we are concerned oftentimes, well, how will we actually fulfill this? How will we actually do this and do this and do this and do that and be with this person and be with that person and do get that done and get this done? And um, it puts a lot of weight on us and it puts a lot of demand on us. But somehow we oftentimes still manage to pull it through. And it's impossible that we give the same amount of attention to every area. So that's an unrealistic expectation on any person is to give the same amount of um, attention to, to every single demand. Some we do, some we don't, some we go to, some we restrain from, um, some we are there for the whole period, some you're not there. But we're trying to manage all these relationships as we go and normally when we have so many demands our interests are divided we need to start choosing where to spend most of our time and that's what i said again is that one thing will always get more attention than something else and we are unable to give equal attention to every thing but there's a relationship that should be cultivated and should have uh, an amount of attention that it would look like that is the only relationship we have in our life. That's the only demand or the attention that we should be given. And it looks, um, it looks like we just don't have other demands because of this one relationship that we have in our lives and so it would look like there's just one relationship so in the midst of all these demands there's actually one relationship that should stand out one one person that should elevate above all and that is our relationship with god but this is commonly not the reality in our lives 
And whether we're single, whether we're married, whatever we might be, um, whether we're a widow, whatever our circumstances might be, there's a relationship, which is our relationship with God. We should take um, high priority and get all the attention. And while I was preparing this message for today, um, just this past week, um, I fell dramatically in this area um, where it was so busy through work and through life and uh, Jojo's birthday. And there were so many things going left and right and all demanding attention and time and resources and all of this that I started noticing, but I'm actually um, neglecting the one relationship that should stand out above everything, whether life is uh, so busy, it should look like I have only one attention and one focus in my life. And you might find yourself in that place. And oftentimes you might find the week that it finds itself busy. The first thing that you uh, get out of or that you would skip is this relationship with God. That's the, the thing you would skip to cultivate or to nurture is, it, is your time with God. And that's why I titled this message, We All Should Be Single. And the, 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 the big idea of this message is that our, our relationship with God should be in such a way and reflect in such a way that doesn't matter the demands or the requirements or the attention life wants from us, it can never precede, it can never override or conquer our relationship with God. And so I want us to look at Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7. And Paul opens 1 Corinthians 7 with the following words. He says, now concerning the matters about which I wrote, uh, about which you wrote. So he was saying that the, the Corinthians wrote about certain matters to him and they wanted input. They wanted feedback on what the answer of Paul will be concerning these matters. And, and I think if we had to ask Paul in 2021, um, Paul, what do you think about these matters? I don't think he would have given us a different answer. Now, like I started, when I started this message, I say I used a quite a peculiar passage to, to bring about this message. So you'll have to follow with me because I'm very much going to speak figuratively and not literally um, into this text that we are preaching about today. So I'm going to start to read for us in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 25, and this will be our introduction at text, and then it will set the stage for the next half of um, chapter 7 that we would be reading together. So 1 Corinthians 7 verse 25 to 31 is the first portion. And it says this, Now concerning the betrothed, I have no command from the Lord, but I give my judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in view of the present distress, it is good for a, a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek, to, uh, do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you have not sinned. And if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned, yet those who marry will have worldly troubles. And I want to spare you that. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as they have had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they have no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. And so Paul is starting by saying, "There's a." he says, um, I think in view of the present distress, the, the present circumstances, the current times that we are in, I think it's good for you to remain as is. I think it's good for you to remain single. This was the literal translation. And, and the, the 
present distress um, oftentimes gets said it might have been a famine, it might have been tough times that they were in it. It, it refers to a, a situation that they found themselves in. And in light of that situation, you should act in the following way. But he continues to use, this, uh, use another quite an interesting word. He says, but the appointed time has grown very short. And some translate this as the last days. Um, and some say it, he was actually saying the times that we are living in is critical. The, the moments we find ourselves, the days are critical. What we do with our days are critical. How we spend our lives are critical. How we divide our attention is critical. Who we give our attention to, who we restrain it from is critical. It's critical that we ensure of what we do. And then he says this present form of this world is passing away. He says we, what we have here now is not forever. And therefore, he's, he's basically saying whatever this is. That's why he was saying if you're married, live like you're single. If you have dealings with the world, live like you don't have dealings with the world. So he's basically saying do not get consumed with these things in such a way that they make you so concerned and anxious that you neglect the one that you should be focused on. He says this current time is passing away. And I know that when we speak about a relationship series, it's oftentimes that we speak about marriage and we this picture of Christ and the church. And, and that's great because that's for now, but that will be passing away. And what will remain is singleness. In heaven is singleness. In heaven it will be one person worshiping God. All of us single, not married to any single person, but all our attention and devotion will be given to God. So Paul was encouraging and bringing forth and saying, do not get consumed with the temporary things. They take too much of your time and attention and it's leading you to compromise on the one that you should be focusing on. And Matthew 24 verse 13 says it clearly it says, but it's the one who endures until the end that will be saved. It's the one that goes right to the end. So in light of the present distress, in light of the, 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 the days that are so critical, in the light of the world that is passing away, don't get consumed, but keep the right focus. And so in light of all that we, all of this, we need the right anxiety in our life, the, the anxiety that is concerned about our relationship with God. It, it should be in such a way, our relationship with God should be in such a way that it looks like, it seems like we are single. It seems like we have a relationship with God and it's like there's nothing else that just matters in our life. And this, this doesn't matter whether you're married or not. Because Paul said if you're married, live like you're single. And if you're single, uh, stay single. And if you have dealings with the world, act like you don't have dealings with the world. Because there is something coming. This present is passing away. And there's something coming that is greater. And so in light of that, Paul continues in verse 32, 32, and he says this, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord, but the married man is anxious about worldly things and how to please his wife and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and in spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things and how to please her husband. I say this to your benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is he's not behaving properly towards his betrothed, if his passions are strong and it, and it has to be, let him do as he wishes. Let him marry. It's not sin. But whoever is firmly established in his heart, being under no necessity, uh, but having his desire under control and has determined in his own heart to keep um, her as his betrothed, he will do well. So then 
He who marries his betrothed does well, but he who refrains from marriage will even do better. A wife is bound to her husband as long as she lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, and own, uh, who she wishes only in the Lord. Yet in my judgment, she is happier if she remains as she is. I think too that I have the Spirit of God. So he closes that chapter by saying, I think too I have the Spirit of God. I also have the wisdom of God to speak into these things. But the first thing that we need to secure a, a singleness relationship with God is we need to have the right anxieties. And you might be thinking, Phil, what, what craziness is that? The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. But here Paul is using this language of being concerned about certain things, being anxious about certain things. And he says this, I want to read it again. I want, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things and how to please his wife and his interests are divided. See, Paul starts by saying, I want you to be free from anxieties, but there is specific concern and anxieties that, 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 the, that the unmarried person has that you shouldn't have, but there's, uh, that the unmarried person has that you should have. But what you shouldn't have, he says, I don't want you to be anxious about worldly things. Because they will divide your interests. And he says, you, wait, how do you get to the place of worrying about worldly things and divided interest in the literal context, in the literal sense, it's being married. But like in our figuratively speaking, I want to say there's things we marry ourselves to that divides our interest. There's things that we join ourselves with and they consume our time in such a manner that we are unable to be anxious about the part that Paul said to the unmarried man about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. And so Paul says, if you want to have a single devotion relationship with God, be, be anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. What does that mean? It means you've got to be concerned. If your life is about the things of God, you've got to be concerned when you wake up in the morning that you're going to please God through this day. That what you do when you breathe, when you sit, when you stand, when you go to work, when you go to an event, wherever you might find yourself, that you are busy pleasing God. And Hebrews says to us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what we're basically saying is, whatever you do, ensure that you're doing it in faith in order that you can please God. But see, this word anxiety might, might not sit well, but it, it is an appropriate word because sometimes we are too relaxed about the, the things of Lord and the pleasure of God. This, this pleasing God is like rendering service to God. This, this, this pleasing God is like giving glory to God. God, what in my life will please you? What would lift your name? What would, what, what would make you be expressed in my life? And so we need to be anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. So firstly, to, do, to, 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 be, um, to display a singleness in our relationship with God, our anxiety should be to please Him and it should far outweigh our anxiety to worldly things. See, our anxiety to please God should far outweigh our anxiety to, to worldly things, to the things the world is putting in front of us. And I'm not even talking about, it might not even be sin. I'm just talking things that is demanding and it's causing you to all the more compromise and relax and be reluctant and slow and slothful on your relationship with God. But Paul is saying, 
We've got to be anxious. The unmarried man, the man that is not connected to anything. His, his concern is God, the things of God, the pleasure of God, the fact that God will be pleased and enjoyed and glorified through his concern that every single step and breath is bringing glory to God. And then secondly, to have this single relationship with God is we have to be concerned about holiness. And Paul says an unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and in spirit. See, the result of having anxiety, Lord, how do I please you? What are the things of you? How can I uh, invest more of my time with you, Lord? How can I stop compromising? It's, it, that would lead to holiness. Holiness literally just means a set-apartness. You're, you're, you're set apart. You're, you're standing out. And when people look at you, they're like, but all you do, it looks like all you do is pleasing God. All oh, you're so set apart. You're set apart in your moral standard. You're set apart in your priorities. The way you're able to say, I gotta go home now because I agreed to do this then and to spend time with God or whatever it might be, but you're set apart in your lifestyle with God in your moral sense. You're, 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 you're bothered by the fact that there's sin and sin separation. Sin is not pleasing to God. And Hebrews says, throw off this thing that is called sin because it will entangle you. It will get you into the worldly things. It will get you worried and concerned and anxious about worldly things. And then you need to get out of that and be, be anxious about the Lord's things because then you're going to be holy. You're going to be set apart. You're going to stand out. You're going to be different. Than the rest. And so too often times we, we just we just fit in. We just we just look like everybody else. But see, God wants this single relationship with Him. Where we are set apart. If you think of Israel and why they had all those laws and things of them, because God wanted them to be set apart. God wanted them to be different than the rest of the world. See, God wants us to be different. God wants our relationship with Him to be different, to be set apart. We're living, we're living a high moral standard, not because of us, but because of Him who's in us. But when we're living a life of high priorities, not because of us, but because of Him in us. And that's a reflection of our lives with Him. So secondly, to display a singleness in our relationship with God, we need to be concerned about holiness. We need to be concerned to be set apart. We need to be concerned to, to look to God and He defines everything that we do. And then, and in this last part, Paul expresses his heart. He tells them why I'm, why he's telling them this. And he says this, I say this to your benefit. I say this to your benefit. Not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and secure an undivided devotion to the Lord. I'm not laying any restraint on you. Literally, he said, I'm not prohibiting anybody to get married. Figuratively, we're speaking, we're saying, we're not saying don't do certain things. Don't go here and don't go there. We're not saying that. He's saying, all I'm trying to express to you, this is what I want to get out of you. And this is what Philip wants to get out of you who's listening is this, is that there is a good order that there is a as Colossians 1 verse 18 says and he is the head of the body the church is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent I want to have a good order and the order is that Jesus God is preeminent he is first and there is no second and this is that he will be preeminent in our lives so that the, the, the demands of life will not be even bothering us because God is preeminently says, I want to secure an undivided devotion to the Lord. I'm not laying restraints on you. Live life. Go to things. Be social. Go out there. But make sure that there's a good order. Make sure God always stays on top. Make sure you, you have an undivided devotion. When, when anything w w tries to compete, it would not even look like it's competing because your de devotion is so undivided that nothing can come into your 
life and relationship with God. You're so anxious to please Him. You're so concerned about being set apart for God. And you're constantly walking day by day, giving yourself in a wholehearted devotion to God. And this is, like I said, right in the top, this is this month of of relationships and we normally labor as love and Valentine's just passed and all these things. But I really felt God placing on my heart that I hope through this message that your relationship with Him will be set up right. And that will be defining every other relationship in life and your priorities and where you spend your time. And that you would throw off sin because sin is the thing that that brings a distance between us and God. And so may we all live like we're single. Nothing, not our wives, not our events, not our family, not our children, not our uh, um, social, not our work. Nothing can compete with our relationship with God. Nothing can get itself in there. Not a a Facebook, not a Netflix, not an Instagram, nothing. Nothing can get itself in there when it comes to priority and time. And it's important as we go through this here. And this is what I conclude with, with, is that what do you practically do about this? I wanna give you one thing is revisit your interests. Revisit where you're putting your attention and your time and where you're building relationships and look where you're compromising and look, measure up. Are you anxious about the Lord? Are you anxious about the worldly things? Are you you concerned to be set apart for God? Is Is there a security that your devotion to God is undivided? And this is wherever you find your life. This is for anybody. There's no person that gets put in this category. So we all need to go back and revisit our time with God and see where we should focus. And so I want to pray for you and close this message off. Father, I thank you, Lord. Lord, that we will be concerned about you, Lord, in light of this present world and everything fading away, that we will not be so consumed about the things of the world, Lord, that we lose track. But Lord, our anxiety, our concern will be how to please you, Lord. Father, we will be concerned about our holiness, our set-apartness for you, Lord. And we will have a, a a, a secured and undivided devotion to you. And Lord, we will let nothing come and interrupt that in our lives. Lord, teach us and help us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So I'm glad that you could join us this morning. Uh, Glad that you could be with us. Um, And as we hope to connect with you through our small groups through the week, if you're not connected, get connected to one of our connect groups. Um, But have a great week and a blessed week and see you next Sunday. Amen. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.